Hey guys, Paper Bird here. Today I'm looking at the books of Edward Louvet. This was a contemporary French writer, and uh, he was also a visual artist, a painter, as well as a photographer. This is the first book of his that I picked up, Suicide. And this was actually the last book of his that he had published. I really didn't have much expectation going into this person's work. I was a little bit apprehensive, actually, because I thought it might have might be like a really depressing experience, but come to find out, as I started reading this book, you know, I got maybe like 10 pages into it, and I knew like right away that I had to just go and pick up the rest of whatever this guy had written. Absolutely. I mean, there was something about the way he wrote. He writes in a very um, compressed style. You know, I still love really dense, evocative prose, um, almost experimental type prose, but you know, I start to also really appreciate what people can do when they compress things to the point of just almost being like cold, you know, like they're just spitting out cold, hard facts. He doesn't really need to expand upon it that much. Maybe he doesn't even care what you think. Uh, you know, it's just this sort of attitude that I really liked about his writing. The very first scene in this book describes how his friend who had gotten married, uh, was going to play tennis with his wife, but then decided to go back into the house, go downstairs to the basement, and then took a pistol and shot himself. Uh, and then it's just sort of some remembrances. It just becomes more and more uh, overpowered by just this second person, him talking to his friend and describing the inner life of his friends to such an extent that it almost seems impossible for him to really know that about another person. With this constant use of the second person, it was almost like he was looking at himself in the mirror or from outside looking in and in almost a condemning type of way or accusatory type of voice describing how difficult life became and leading towards that inve inevitable end. The concept of this book, Suicide, struck me very similarly to the short story Good Old Neon by David Foster Wallace, although the execution of it is done very differently. You kind of feel tempted to read this work as a suicide note. It's just unavoidable, and but you're also kind of fighting against that urge to do so. Some people consider him like a pointillist type writer. Um, I would say more cubist was my initial thought, um, just kind of showing different angles. After finishing Suicide, I went out and got the rest of LeVay's work and started to read him from the very beginning, starting with works. This was a collection of ideas that he had, uh, sort of like for art projects. It's awfully generous of him to put down all of his ideas and compile them for everyone to see as his first work. Number one, a book describes works that the author has conceived but not brought into being. Um, maybe also this is a way for him to copyright his ideas. So there's, there's that. Um, not have to go through the artifice, the entire artifice of creating a story and trying to convince you. Um, it's more like, boom, here are the artistic experiences that I want you to have. And you can imagine it for yourself. You can be the creator of these in your mind. Like some of these are not, it's not even possible to, um, to conceptualize and execute, I think. Some of it is theoretical in a way. He did actually execute on some of these ideas. There's one uh, called pornography where uh, he takes people dressed in regular clothes, like office clothes, and puts them in sexual positions. There's another project that he fulfilled, which was uh, to go to America and photograph small towns that happen to have the same names as more famous world cities like Paris and Baghdad and Amsterdam. He was interested in the dissonance that certain objects arranged a certain way would provide. I read somewhere that um, it was maybe suggested that LeVay was maybe an Olympian, but I don't really see that. There is some mention of George Perec uh, early on in one of these books, and he does mention playing the N plus 7 game. It was an interesting way to start off, though. I mean, it's like a certain fanfare that uh, you burst onto the scene with something so uncompromising. And speaking of uncompromising, LeVay continued on in the same vein with his next work, Newspaper, 
second published novel. There's an international section, there's society, there's other news, economics, science and technology, and each piece is sort of like an article or a summarization of an article. Not really the muscles you take to a traditional reading experience, but um, more employing what you would use to uh, consume nonfiction. Um, Borges did that, I think uh, David Markson did that in his unique way, and um, the Dictionary of the Khazars guy did that. Uh, so yeah, I mean this it's not as bad as reading like a glossary or anything like that But what was great about this book to me was that he employed this really generic bland objective voice of journalism uh, in a way that you know made it kind of like found art and this book doesn't really go into any specifics of a particular region or people you know, like proper names uh, money's referred to as monetary denominations but the events that are described are so familiar to what we read in our everyday media that it's immediately recognizable. It feels almost like he could have cobbled this together from various different media sources. He even amps up the coldness even more on this style and it's just totally clinical and antiseptic. But what's interesting is that the material itself, what's being described is the opposite. It's septic or poisonous. The voice imitator by Thomas Bernhardt kind of does the same thing. LeVay exercises far more restraint in this work. He's almost not visible as an author in this piece. And it's almost laughable how faithful he is to the, the form. It's almost like these constraining little corsets. I just got this image of sexual parts being squeezed and turning purple. What? I start to become numb with all these tragedies that are being described and then like this section here, other news, he just, every sentence at the beginning either starts with a murder or rape or death. And it was just death after death and it's like little obituaries and the people they left behind and the funeral arrangements. And then right up against that is the celebration of births just birth after birth and it was just like the shaft of light came through the text and just knocked me back I mean it's like tear inducing just what happened here but it didn't last for very long it was just uh, almost like a random thing and despite themselves sometimes there's humor that's wrenched out of these stories just this deadpan depressing humor so I don't know maybe satire or condemnation of the entire human race so these books are all published by Dalkey Archive and they, you know, it's, they're bite-sized, so I think it's easy to take them all and read them sequentially as being parts of maybe like a larger novel. I think that works, but um, there's something about this book. It, you know, when I checked it out from the library, it had this sort of matte finish, and I think newspaper also has that too, where, I don't know, it had this collection of like fecal matter on it, so I just put this um, tape over it just to kind of prevent myself from catching E. coli. This book is purportedly an autobiography and I read it as such. The concision here is turned up to an extreme. When I first started reading it, it almost felt like I was reading fortune cookie fortunes, like that type of clipped, uh, that type of clipped syntax one after another. And again, it kind of reminded me of David Markson, just uh, maybe without all the paragraphing. And, but it was jumping around a lot. There's a lot of jump cuts here, really outlining the parts of himself, maybe the more unique parts of himself that may be like, you know, better kept under light, but he wants to take out and examine and to better understand himself. And thus uh, for us to also better understand ourselves because a lot of these things is stuff that we can all identify with. And certain artists have deep-seated issues that they are maybe ashamed about or are suppressing or maybe don't even have access to. And so they use this structure of storytelling, creativity, in order to get at those issues indirectly and uh, expel some of them. But I think LaVey does it in a more direct fashion, this whole cataloging of himself, every detail. And, uh, you know, I think he is uh, getting at what a lot of artists may consider their driving force, which is to actualize their unique souls as physical manifestations that will continue to exist after their deaths through art. And he is just, I mean, this is pure solipsism. He's just doing it uh, as directly and efficiently as possible. No frills. This book dovetails really nicely with suicide. The last couple pages of this book and the first scene of this book. Uh, it's almost like a, a foregone conclusion. You can kind of get the seed, the sense of what his path was going to be. You know, he mentioned a couple of suicide attempts and uh, med taking medication, going to different psychiatrists. Um, you know, there's that certain type of personality, I think, uh, where it reminds me of Nietzsche's ideal arrangement of society, 
where you know at the bottom you might have like um, those that are the most numb to the pain of the world uh, being forced to do the hardest labor and then you go up to those who are more sensitive doing less labor all the way up to the type of person who is so sensitive that even if you take away any possible pain in the world he would still experience more pain than anyone else those kind of people i appreciate their minds and their point of view and whatever they're able to produce in art while they're alive and i'm really looking forward to reading the works of whoever the next reincarnation is of edward levey